So my name is Simon Stedman. I'm the founder and co-owner of Ultimate Adventures. Hi, my name is Deirdre Stedman and I'm the co-owner of Ultimate Adventures. This tour came about, um, we used to just do Lua Plain National Park on its own. And then when I heard about this bat migration going back, geez, almost 10 years, because they're at a similar time of the year, I thought it would be a good idea to combine the Lua migration and the bat migration and call it the Zambia Migrations Expedition. So our first night in Zambia, we stay at a lodge called Kabula Lodge. We've been going there for quite a few years now. The reason why I love it so much is it's on, literally on the banks of the Zambezi with a beautiful deck overlooking the Zambezi um, and also the campsite is really spectacular. It's massive open area with grass, lots of shade. Guys could do tiger fishing. We also do a little day trip up to Sisioma Falls, which is about 50 k's from Kabula Lodge. Uh, so today's drive, we've got about 350 k's to get to our campsite in Lua. The last 30 k's is thick sand. Uh, I think highlight of the day today is going to be a little pontoon crossing over the river and then a nice steep sandbank on the other side just to test the guys' 4x4 skills. So uh, got that to look forward to today. So the main reason for us uh, visiting Lua Plains is to see the second largest wildebeest migration in Africa. How are you enjoying the Zambian trip so far, Mick? Phenomenal. What was your highlight so far? Uh, the falls yesterday. Okay. It's pretty spectacular. Cool. You know what time it is, right? Yes, I do. You go first. All right. What do ticks and the Eiffel Tower have in common? <laughs> They're both parasites. What do you call snakes that live on cars? No idea. Windshield vipers. Mm, okay. <clears throat> uh, woman is in court. Beat her husband to death with his guitar collection. Judge says to her, first offender. She said, no, first a Gibson and then offender. I'm holding out. You are? You, you, I, I thought I'd fail you with that one. Yeah. I'm yeah. disappointed. Yes. I'm left to up my game. Yes. Okay. Mick, mm -hmm. what do you call a Ford Fiesta that ran out of gas? <coughs> you know. A Ford Siesta. I <laughs> <laughs> got one, yes. I'm in the lead. I'm in the lead, so, so it's 2 1. Let's get on the road. Okay. I was having the time of my life, knowing I am in the lead in the dad joke competition. At the fuel station, however, Mick couldn't figure out why I didn't laugh at any of his jokes. So we've just stopped for provisions here in Mongu, like in Mongoose, without this shop right. Fantastic shop. Everything you could hope to get, find in a rural place and more. Uh, cold drinks, we've got some beers stocked up on a lot of stuff. Some chocolate, some sweets. And this little perla here, this is Dirk's. This is what I have to put up with when I'm overlanding with Dirk. Anywho, on we go. So once we hit the end of the tar road, we reach a little town called Kalabu, and that's where the ferry is, where we cross over into Lua Plains. Uh, the ferry is really exciting, firstly because it just gives you that whole African feel, so while you're drifting over getting into Lua Plains, you've also got your little Makoros and all the locals coming over. Um, and what was even more exciting about this pontoon was we had to reverse onto it. 
Normally the pontoon that we use wasn't working and we had to use another one. So it's only got one entrance on and off. So it was, do we reverse on or do we reverse off? So that was quite exciting. So we've uh, reached the pontoon crossing here behind me. Time to deflate the tires, because now the real adventure is going to begin. To trust you and jump down I'll keep my status quo up here Won't let anybody come near I'll fix it on my own 29 years I've been the same Trying so hard to run from shame But how long can I keep up the pace To fool myself I don't need grace We have finally arrived in Lua Plains. I'm so happy to be here. Beautiful rain, and that is good for the wildebeest migration in this area. They come down and they follow the rains and they uh, give birth. So we're gonna be meeting a lot of new wildebeest babies uh, tomorrow or the day after. I'm just super happy to be here after an eventful day. And uh, we are about five kilometers from camp so we should be arriving shortly. I've been here once before and I actually met Lady Lua. Do yourself a favor, go watch the documentary called uh, Lady Lua. Uh, it should be on YouTube. Uh, it's this lonely lioness roaming the plains on her own after the war. And I got to film her one time and she unfortunately passed away after that. But I cannot believe I'm here once again in this beautiful setting in Zambia. Oh. It's magical. Dude, uh, hi Mick. Hi, D uh, Dirky. Yes. Bring your camera. There's a frog. It's that size. A para. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your hand next to it for size. People can see. Dude, if it bites me. It won't bite you. It's as big as my hand. Easy, Jeremiah. Ah! Yer. Lua Plain National Park, uh, in my opinion, is one of the last real wilderness areas left in Africa. When, when you travel in Lua, you really get that feel that you're in the middle of nowhere, vast open plains, uh, very little people there. Uh, they've only got a few campsites, so the park doesn't get overcrowded. So when you visit Lua Plains, you really feel um, immersed in nature and just in the middle of nowhere. It's beautiful. So yeah, it was really exciting for us to get into Lua Plains this time because I could just see from the drive towards Lua Plains that there'd been a lot of um, rain. So it was really, really green, which was really nice because, I mean, we've done Lua Plains quite a few times and we've never seen it as green as it was. So that's very exciting, firstly, to see the greenery in Lua and secondly, knowing that the wildebeest have actually migrated south. So we were anticipating really big herds. Good morning. It's a very early morning here in Lua Plains and we are about to go on a game drive. But I just wanted to show you or let you hear, if you can, the amount of bird life here. So last night we heard, I think, three different owls in this campsite alone. But just have a hear quickly. It's absolutely incredible. 
cannot wait for this game drive. In the distance, we spotted a small family of side-striped jackal, and it looked like mom and dad were teaching the young pup where to wander and where not to. This was also my first ever sighting of a side-striped jackal. Something interesting about Lua Plain National Park is it's actually uh, one of the oldest protected areas in Africa. Um, the king of the, the local area there, the Lozi King, he actually proclaimed it a, a game reserve in the, the late 1800s, like 1880. Uh, it was originally his uh, royal hunting ground, then uh, it was uh, proclaimed a game reserve. And in 2003, African parks got involved and just um, really started to, uh, let's say, put Lua Plain on the map. Um, obviously, Lady Lua, the famous lioness that uh, um, roamed those plains on her own for many years. Um, that documentary about her really kind of puts Lua Plain into the, into the spotlights of the public. Um, that's when I started visiting, uh, when I heard about Lady Lua. I um, was lucky enough to see her on uh, many occasions before she passed away. Um, and the size of the park, it's, uh, it's 3,369 3, square kilometres. So it's not a massive park. Um, Big plain, few uh, tree islands scattered around the place, uh, but the bird life, the wilderness migration, uh, the large hyena population, it just gives Lua a, a, a special feel to it. So one thing I really love about Lua Plains is the bird life. Uh, years before we've seen the massive flocks of marabou storks and pelicans but this year we saw the massive flocks of crane, crown cranes and wattled cranes which is really really nice to see because you don't normally see them in such big flocks. First day on the Liua Plains, a place I've had a look at on a map for many years, uh, didn't think I'd ever get here. Uh, got here yesterday, late in the evening, set up camp, but this morning we set out on our first game drive. And initially there was uh, a lot of shrubbery and trees, very similar to the Kruger or some place in Botswana. But then we rounded a corner and the plains opened up out ahead of us and it was just absolutely Phenomenal, mind-blowing, better than I imagined it would be. We had some fantastic sightings. The bird life here is mental. Uh, we saw some hyena um, and some other interesting stuff, but just so chuffed to be here, and it's just phenomenal. So it's lunchtime now. It's overcast, but it is very hot. So we're gonna camp up under the uh, little shady abode here in camp for a couple of hours and then we're going to head out again later this afternoon when it gets cooler at about four o'clock and we're going to head back to a particular hyena den which is kind of a permanent hyena den and we'll see what we can see. Okay so this is my point of view and I've had a lot of questions on how the iron van is set up so I'm going to start by showing you the inside not really much happening in there and then we'll go to the back. But um, this is a, a mess at the moment. But this is normally where I keep all my camera gear. I've got a bean bag from uh, Camera Tech that I put on the side and uh, for filming uh, from the inside of the car. 
And uh, the rest is pretty standard on the inside. Um, but where the real magic is, is here at the back. So let me just tilt this up a bit. This is normally my kitchen area, also a bit of a mess. Um, on the left-hand side of the car, because if you do pull to the side of the road, it's on the left-hand side, so you can do your coffee or whatever quite safely. Got some wood here, and then I've got a garden uh, box with recovery gear, um, some wash-up gear, and then in the middle there, I've got a uh, case with all my gas stuff, uh, my cooking stuff, and then at the back here, we've got the Iron Man fridge, also quite dirty because we've been traveling. Um, this side I run a freezer, and then this side I do have a fridge. At the back, we've got one of the Iron Man 4x4 maxi cases, and it fits perfectly underneath the, the gun case there. And as you can see, so you, my beers, cold drinks, everything is inside here, and it fits nicely. If you slide it in like that, it fits in perfectly. Cool. Then at the back here, water tank, uh, my compressor is there. And then on this side is all the electronics. Um, I've got an inverted charger, got a DC to DC inside as well in this box. And then my voltage for my second secondary battery, my auxiliary battery. And then I've got some plug points here for all my camera uh, charging, uh, so I can charge while I'm driving. But that's more or less the car. Then we've got the rooftop tent, a Swift 1400. And then I've got a shower cubicle here, gas on top. And then on this side, we have the awning, uh, Delta Wing 270 XD71. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. So this morning we found a hyena den and there were a couple of babies but I was a bit too late um, on the camera. So now we've camped out here right next to the den. The den is about 10-15 meters away from me and in lure planes you can actually get out of your car but as long as you stay within 10 meters from your car. So I'm going to sit inside the car and wait for them to emerge and then see what their feeding is and maybe get a couple of close-up shots off the tripod, but I'm ready for it. So there's the den, right there. Let's hope we get some good action. Uh, with Lady Lua being for many years the only line on the plane, uh, the, the, the hyenas were the apex predator there. So that population really exploded. Uh, so that's why there's a large population of hyenas there still now. Um, but with the lion's uh, population growing, uh, I believe now speaking to the, uh, the people there in the office, there's around 15, 16 lions there now that just introduced some more. So that lion population is, is growing. Um, but they're still living in harmony with the, with the hyenas. Um, they, they, they're very successful hunters, so during that time of the migration with all those little calves around, it really is the time of plenty. That's why we saw the little cubs running around, plenty of food around, so the, the hyenas have always prosper there just because of um, the, the habitat, you know, the, the, the way they hunt, they like to chase their prey down and uh, lots of little calves around, so that's why the hyenas always uh, prosper in Lua Plain. An interesting similarity between the wildebeest and the, the hyena in Lua Plain is the way that they're built. So uh, if you look at them, they've got like a sloping back from the head down to the, down to the rump. Um, that's because both of them travel long distances. You know, hyenas go out far to forage and obviously wildebeest migrate. So when they run, they get this rocking movement um, with that, uh, the way they're designed, which is very energy efficient. So they don't use a lot of energy to travel those long distances because the way they're designed. What an incredible sighting. Every now and then you see a baby hyena pop its head out. It's just stunning. Wow. 
probably the best hyena sighting I've ever seen. Mick. Amazing. So on all of our tours we offer dinner, which is really, really nice, especially on a tour like this because there's a few days of long driving. So when you get back to camp, the fire is lit and you sit down for half an hour, pour your glass of wine and dinner is ready. So all our dinners are prepared by the famous Master P. And, um, what we strive for in Ultimate Adventures is the food. Um, we, we feel that we want to cook for you like we would cook for you at home. So every night, I mean, it's a mixture between poikis, um, he makes his own bread, he makes his own naan bread, we do bras, there's always such a variety. Um, and his food is absolutely incredible. I mean, so people actually sometimes don't believe us. They're like, do you pre-cook this? Or, but Chef makes everything fresh on tour. And We've had so many people say that they can't even get food like that in a restaurant and he does it out of a little trailer. Absolute legend. <laughs> say again. I don't think I can talk like this. <laughs> Good morning there, Dirk. Good morning there, Simon. Today, I want to go and try and find you some predators. Yay! Because I've um, heard that the wild dogs were spotted a little bit uh, further north than where we were yesterday. So I want to head up there. Um, also the lions like to hang around in that area close to uh, one of the tree islands up there. So uh, we'll head straight up there, spend some time in the area and uh, hopefully we get lucky. The wildebeest migration in Lua Plains is the second largest wildebeest migration in Africa, um, second to the, the Serengeti, the, the well-known one. Um, they basically follow the, um, the fresh grass from the seasonal burning and then from the rains that come normally early November. So they migrate from the north down into the, the, the southern part of uh, the Lua Plain National Park. Um, there's around between 14 and 50,000 animals that uh, come down into the southern plains um, around November time every year. Although we searched for the lions, we couldn't find them. But the bird life in this park remains one of the best I've ever seen. It was our last day in Lua Plains, and I couldn't help but feel privileged and very lucky to witness a place like this. True wilderness at its finest.
Long day today, Dirk. Uh, we're heading back over the pontoon. Uh, we're heading through Kafu National Park to a little campsite right on the river called Roy's Camp. Beautiful little spot. Uh, it's going to be a long day in the saddle today uh, with the pontoon crossing filling up with fuel and then from here to the camp's like four, over 400 k. So uh, long day, um, but it's uh, almost time to uh, settle up. But on the bright side, now we are one day closer to those bats. Thank you so much for watching. If you do like the videos, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And if you want to tour with Ultimate Adventures, go to ultimateadventures.tv. See you next time.